Hello, welcome back to my channel. This is Bluefin Design and I'm Nikhil. And in this video, we are going to be talking about journey maps. As you may know already, I'm in the middle of a UX case study where I'm going to be walking you through the entire design process that I'm following and uh, sharing uh, my, my work and some of the tips along the way. So if you haven't watched my previous videos, um, there's a link down in the description to the entire playlist where I'll walk you through uh, my research pr process, um, the design process. Also, um, I'll be doing some testing along the way. So uh, if you haven't already, uh, please hit that like button. It helps me and motivates me to share some content and uh, also helps the YouTube algorithm. And if you like this video, do share it with your network. And so, Let's get started. So as you all know, I'm working on a UX case study for language translation. And uh, we're, we're going to be working on the define phase of the entire UX process. Um, and this video is about user journey maps. So let's get into it. What I'll be talking about in this video is what is a journey map? Why to use journey maps? What are some of the components of a journey map? and uh, some variations of journey map that may be uh, in use in the industry and they have some different meanings so we'll get into that and also i'll share um, some examples of good journey maps so what is a journey map well um, it's basically a visualization of the process that the user follows to complete a particular task so you're just actually noting down the process that your user, your potential user is following to complete a particular task um, or a set of tasks. It's also called as customer journey maps or user journey maps. So it's basically the same thing. Um, what they do is they describe the timeline of the user's thoughts and their actions to create a story then you, which you can then actually share with different stakeholders. The entire timeline is broken into different steps, which, uh, which we'll actually uh, look into in just a moment. More importantly, why should be using uh, journey maps? Uh, the reason is they force a conversation for the entire team to empathize with the user and understand their journey. When the team is able to create empathy uh, with the user or empathize with the user, um, it's actually critical to understand and improve the user experience. So journey maps are really important for, for your team or the design team or the team which is working on that project. Uh, journey maps also provide a clear and a concise and a memorable way to communicate the user's journey to the different stakeholders within your organization. For example, uh, the product managers or um, the C-level executives or even the clients. So what, what journey maps are able to do is, as I mentioned, they provide a clear and a concise and a memorable way because it's visual and we're actually sharing and showing the entire journey of the user, right, within that one snapshot. The journey maps can also be used to make design decisions because uh, it's important to remember like the journey of the user uh, is, is basically driven uh, from uh, by the data collected from user research. And so again, we are just actually making a snap, taking the entire timeline or the journey of the user and um, showing it in a visualized way. So it actually helps in making design decisions. So this is one of the example of uh, like a structure, a good structure of what a journey map should look like. Again, credits to Nielsen Normal Group for compiling this image and the structure. So on the top, you can see that we, you can use like, you know, give a photo to that particular persona. So you can add a photo and give them a name. If you haven't check, checked out my personas video, um, there's the link in the description and also somewhere in the corner over here. So again, that persona, you bring that in over here so you can see that on the top left and uh, you give some scenario like what this journey is about, what the user is actually doing and some of the expectations of the user like while performing these tasks, what is the user expecting or what, what their goals are. And down below, you can see four different vertical sections. So these are basically the different phases um, uh, in the user's journey. Not all journey, not all user journeys have only four phases. So it's basically customizable. 
uh, if you are able to break down the journey of the user in three steps or three phases or five phases you'd make four or five or three phases accordingly so the four phases here in this case are define compare negotiate and select so the current scenario is Jamie wants to switch their current mobile plan. So that's like that journey is actually broken down into four stages. What we fill in like the information in there is like the text you see the number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, etc. Those are the actions that the user takes. Um, the chat bubbles that you see, those are uh, those are the thoughts that the user may have, and you may have captured those in um, the research. And the wavy line is actually the emotional level um, compared on a corresponding scale, whether they are frustrated, whether they are excited, whether they are sad or happy, and so on. So within this one image, you are able to pack so much information. And that's not all on the bottom you can see that what may be some of the opportunities that you have or that the user has taken um, you may actually note down those opportunities as well so within this one image you're actually able to capture the entire journey of a user with respect to that scenario so now let's look at uh, some of that components which we just noticed um, so the first one the persona it's basically um, the actor or persona it's the same thing it's advisable to create the persona first and then come to the journey map and so create one journey map for every user or every persona of the product or a service for every scenario so again as um, you may have like two or three scenarios for your project so you'd create a, a journey map for each scenario and again a journey map for each persona the next component of a journey map is the scenario and the expectations. So as we saw in the example here on the top, you can see that there's the scenario and there's the expectations. So what the situation is uh, that the user is actually in. So you mentioned that and then some of their goals, like what are they looking, uh, are looking for? These scenarios can be real if you're working on a real project or an anticipated scenario. Like, you know, if, if you're actually working on a new project. Um, a new product altogether. Journey maps are actually best used for scenarios that are a sequence of events. So as we saw here, these like the journey is actually broken down into different phases. So if if there's a sequence of events in that journey, um, journey map is actually the best example to um, best method to to move with. The other component was the actual journey phases or the timeline, right? So they are the high level stages in that journey. And these act like, as I mentioned, they vary from scenario to scenario. So some journey may have, like you may be divide, uh, you may be able to divide that journey into five stages or three stages. It's totally customizable. These phases are actually based on the data that is collected from the user research. Um, it's not a good practice to actually assume this journey and make up a journey map just for the sake of it. The next component is the action, the mindset and the emotions. So the wavy line, uh, the number of the actions that the user takes. Uh, so this is like that component. Now, again, actions, as I mentioned, they are the steps that the user takes in that particular journey. Uh, the mindset is the user's thoughts or some questions they may have or certain motivations during those different phases. And emotions, as they say, they are actually just plotted as a single line um, along the journey based on the experience. So if they like the journey, uh, like, you know, of using a product, they may be excited or they may be happy. So the emotions actually is the line. It gives a good picture of how the user feels um, using that particular product. The last one actually is the opportunities. So um, these may be like, you know, some of the insights that you may have gained from mapping this journey. Like what are the, uh, the gaps that you may be able to fill with your product? They actually describe the ways in which um, the, the experience can be improved. Again, as I said, like if there are any gaps that have been identified, um, which you may have not considered before, um, like this uh, with journey maps, you may be able to do that as well and ultimately improve the overall experience of the user. Really quickly, just to recap, you can see the persona on the top left. And then there's the scenario and the expectation for every scenario. You create a journey map and for every persona, you create a journey map. 
and below that you have the timeline of the user's journey and broken down into different phases and within those phases you kind of uh, plot um include the steps or actions that the user takes some of their thoughts or the mindset and their emotional level and below that in the end you can actually mention some of the opportunities that you may have noticed um, while creating this user journey this is a journey map that that i created for a personal project of mine some time ago so that's how it is like that's the persona i gave her the name leslie and that's the scenario so she needs new breakfast recipes um and uh, she actually wants her kids to eat healthy so that's the scenario and her expectation is to find variety of organic products and prepare fresh and healthy breakfast so again i'm going to actually divide the entire journey of leslie into four phases so she is deciding what to make then travel to the store or the grocery store um, and then shop for different products and again come back home and then cook so next i am kind of mentioning or uh, laying out the different steps or actions that leslie takes within each of that phase and also here are some of the uh, some of the thoughts that she had or uh, some of the feedback or questions that she had and this is the emotional level of leslie while she was actually performing those actions and this is the entire journey is actually based off of real research field research that i did talking to different users and then creating those personas um so what are some of the variations uh, that i mentioned earlier some of the other maps that you can make and that you can actually use um to to depending on your project is um an empathy map so what an empathy map is it's basically a graph or a plot basically divided into four quadrants and each of the quadrant is what the user says what the user thinks what the user feels and what the user does this is based from user research and you plot the graph of what they want to do so again this will help you build empathy with the user uh, what a service blueprint is and uh, service blueprint is basically a very very detailed level of a journey map as you can see here uh, the main phases or the main components of a service blueprint is obviously the timeline upon the top as you can see and then some evidence some customer journey so that's the journey map along uh, the customer journey and now uh, they have some more information as well now this is actually divided into three phases because we have multiple actors within this service blueprint so on the top we have the user um in the middle there is the front stage employees um now next we have the backstage actions and then on the bottom we have the support process so they are like you know you are able to add um the different steps and actually map out the entire journey of the entire system as a whole and that's why it is called service blueprint because this lays out the entire um, blueprint of how the system uh, will work in accordance with the user or the frontline actors or the backstage actors as well this is one more example of uh, a journey map and as you can see here we have um eric which is the persona on the top left and then there's the uh, scenario he is actually an emotional car buyer so he wants to buy a car that's the scenario we he, like you know there are some expectations that eric has and again this is actually image taken from nielsen normal group so the credit goes to them and now you can see here that the his journey of buying a car is actually divided into five phases so considering to buy a car um exploring the options comparing those options uh, testing some of the items that they have like that eric may like and then again negotiating a deal to finally purchase a car they have also laid out the actions that he takes and again there's some more additional detail like you know what device or what medium is eric using is it a mobile device is it a laptop or a computer and finally testing is basically to take an actual physical test drive they've also mentioned some of the mindset uh, some of the thoughts and some of the questions that eric has and again there's the emotional graph so you can see that within the compare phase eric was really confused and going just in circles 
um, and that is clearly noted here in that emotion graph. So much information is packed within this journey map and it's a good tool to use to compare and communicate the user research with the stakeholders. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, please hit that like button. Uh, it really motivates me to see how, how much you like my videos. If you have any questions, uh, just pop them down in the comment section. I'll try my best to answer to each and every one of them. If you want to book a call and talk to me about anything that's on your mind related to user experience, uh, whether it's a new project that you're working on or it's your capstone project for college, or it's a thesis project, um, or if you want to uh, gain any feedback, uh, I'm open uh, to talking to you. Uh, do subscribe to my channel. It really helps me share this video with your network so more people can benefit from this video. Thank you so much.